Um, thanks for the introduction. I'm Long Yi from Wilson and Skull Labs. And today I'm really excited to share with you my project that uses genomics approaches to understand the roles of GATA456 family transcription factors in early cell fate specification. GATA456 are zinc finger transcription factors that, are, that play essential but redundant role in vertebrate heart development. In human, uh, individual heterozygous loss of function mutations in GATA456 have been associated with congenital heart disease. Loss of GATA4 in mice and 5 in zebrafish display a comparable phenotype, a reduction of the cardiac progenitors and improper migration of them, known as the cardiac defida phenotype. This suggests that the zebrafish GATA5 is the functional homology of the mammalian GATA4. Further loss of GATA4 and 6 in mice or 5 and 6 in zebrafish result in a heartless phenotype. Here, mouse embryos deficient for GATA4 and 6 completely lose their hearts. And in GATA5 and 6 deficient zebrafish embryos, the linear heart tube marked by the cardiomyocyte marker MAL7 is completely abolished. All these highlights the essential role for GATA456 in regulating heart development. Although these factors are grouped as cardiac GATA factors, given their essential role in cardiac development, their expression can be detected much earlier and broader than the cardiac progenitor markers. For example, in zebrafish, the expression of GATA5 and GATA6 can be detected prior to the onset of gastrulation, broadly within the mesoderm population. The GATA5 and 6 expressing mesoderm progenitors contains the precardiac cells. As development proceeds, cells at the anterior lateral plate mesoderm, or ALPM for short, will turn on the expression of NKX2.5, the canonical cardiac progenitor marker. This events indicate that cells are specified into a cardiac fate. During the process of early cardiac lineage commitment, GATA5 and GATA6 are constitutively expressed. And in contrast to their broad expression in the, in the gastrulating mesoderm, their expression becomes more restricted to the ALPM region, where the cardiac cells are located. When GATA5 and GATA6 are knocked down, we observe no NKX2.5 expressing cardiac progenitor cells suggesting that GATA5 and 6 are required for the early specification of the cardiac lineage, likely during or immediately after gastrulation. So this brings us to the question that how GATA5 and 6, while being broadly expressed in the gastrulating mesoderm, are able to facilitate the early segregation of the cardiac lineage. To this end, we isolated GATA5 GFP positive cells that are enriched for the cardiac lineage. Here we obtained zebrafish embryos at stages spanning early gastrulation to early segmentation, when the cardiac progenitor marker NKX215 is turned on. Here we're using a back transgenic that fits fully recapitulate the endogenous GATA5 expression. The long progenitors of GFP allowed us to capture all the cells with early GATA5 activity. And we can also study the expression dynamics of GATA5 within them. And I will come back to this point later in my talk. Moreover, the activity of the transgene is not affected upon GATA5 and 6 knockdown. Therefore, we also collected GATA5 and 6 deficient embryos at two developmental stages. These embryos were then dissociated into single cells and GFP positive cells were isolated through facts. We then subjected the GFP positive cells to single cell RNA-seq and obtained around 1,000 to 2,000 cells for each condition. All these experiments were done in a close collaboration with a former graduate student, Shi Fei Yuan. So I would like to share with you the wild type only data first. Here we visualize the developmental progression of the GFP positive cells from 6 to 13 hour post fertilization using a graph based method and a force directed layout. Here each dot represents a cell and these, dot, uh, these cells are colored based on their developmental stages. Within the graph, we can see the progression of these cells and the formation of branches and different branching tips. Using established markers, we, are, we observe a huge heterogeneity at 13 hour post validation, including the cardiac progenitor population and many other mesoderm and endoderm cell types. This indicates that a broad spectrum of lineages that arise from GAF, early GATA5 expressing cells. We know that at 13 hour post fertilization, the cardiac progenitor cells still express GATA5. What about other cell types captured in our ex experiment? What's the expression pattern of GATA5 and 6 within them as they develop? To address these questions, 
we established pseudo time developmental trajectories for each distinct lineage to delineate the temporal dynamics of GATA5. Here are the pseudo time expression profiles of GATA5 along the developmental trajectories of representative lineages. We have pseudo time on the x axis and normalized log expression level on the y axis. The pseudo time corresponded well with actual developmental time points. Here we can see that the cardiac progenitor cells maintain a relatively high level of GATA5 expression throughout its development. development. Other cell types will selectively silence GATA5 in distinct manners. For example, the craniofrangial mesoderm, which will give rise to the muscle and vascular cells of the head and neck, gradually turn off GATA5 expression from 8 to 13 hour post fertilization. Although I don't have time to show you today, we do, have a we do observe a similar trend for GATA6. In summary, GATA5 and GATA6 expression are dynamically regulated along the developmental trajectory of many lineages. Given such dynamic expression pattern of GATA5 and GATA6, we then wonder how loss of GATA5 and 6 would affect their specification. We first combined 13-hour wild type and GATA5 and 6 knockdown single-cell RNA-seq data. Here is a UMAP of the combined data sets with wild type cells in blue and GATA5 and 6 deficient cells in red. And supervised clustering then group cells into molecularly distinct clusters, and we assign the cell types based on marker genes. Overall, we observed a very similar cell type composition in both data sets. A, not a notable exception was the cardiac lineage, cluster 10, shown here, which is largely absent in GATA5 and 6 knockdown embryos. We then performed cell composition analysis and plotted the population fault change between GATA5 and 6 knockdown and wild type embryos. Aside from, aside from the absence of the cardiac lineage, we observed concurrent expansion of the craniofrangial mesoderm as well as the erythroid progenitor population. In the context of cardiac lineage specification, we are specifically interested in the expansion of craniofrangial mesoderm because these lineages have been shown to um, share a common origin. For the sake of time, I'm not going into details about our functional validation, but we do have experiments demonstrating GATA5 and 6 in balancing cardiac versus frangial fate. And we also have work in tunicate siona further suggests that this is likely an ancestral feature of the cardiac GATA factors. We next aim to understand the mechanism underlying this. Previous studies demonstrated the pioneering activity of GATA4 in establishing accessible chromatins in mammalian cells to determine if GATA5 and GATA6 controls cardiac versus pharyngeal fate specification by modulating chromatin accessibilities in zebrafish, we performed a tactic. Here we chose eight hour post fertilization, a stage when a committed cardiac lineage was not detected as the establishment of lineage-specific enhancers usually precedes gene activation or lineage commitment. Here we're using the same back transgenic, and I will focus on the comparison in the GFP-positive population between wild type and GAFM6 knockdown condition. Upon GAFM6 knockdown, we detected around 2,600 differentially accessible regions, or DARS for short, with more than 2,000 regions losing accessibility and another 372 regions gaining accessibility. And I will refer them as closed and open DARS respectively. Using functional enrichment tool GREAT, we found that these closed DARS were highly enriched for many heart development related processes. And GATA motifs were the strongest enriched within them. These suggest that GATA factors is likely to directly regulate the accessibility of these closed DARS. We also confirmed the, the, the cardiac activity of some of these enhancers using enhancer reporter assays, but I don't have time to show you today. And based on these, uh, we propose that GATA5 and 6 regulate early cardiac lineage specification, at least partially through promoting the accessibility of the cardiac enhancers. Loss of which is likely one reason that resulted in the loss of car cardiac competence. For open DARS, Although no frangial related processes were associated, we did observe an enrichment of the open DARS near known frangial regulators that have conserved role in multiple species, including TBX1 and EDF genes. Here are, so, here are some examples of the frangial regulators. We have EDF2 here and TBX1. 
The orange track represents a taxic signal in wild type GATA5 GFP positive population, which are enriched for pre cardiac cells, while the blue track represents signals from GATA5 and 6 knockdown in rows. The open DARs are highlighted in blue boxes. And we do observe a few open DARs near these pharyngeal regulators. We also confirm the pharyngeal muscle activity of the open DAR near TBX1. So based on th these data, um, we propose that the presence of GATA represses the accessibility of the pharyngeal enhancers. And this is likely indirect, but requires future work. When GATA5 and 6 are knocked down, the repression is removed. And the open chromatin landscape is similar to that of the wild type pharyngeal mesoderm, which in nature requires a down regulation of GATA5 and GATA6. And that's likely one of the reasons why we observe an expanded pharyngeal progenitor population upon GATA5 and 6 knockdown. With that, I would like to thank any, everyone in the Scott and Wilson lab, especially the former graduate student Shafei from both labs, Nathan and Megan for some experimental val validation, Huayun for some insightful discussion, and of, of course, our collaborator for, from New York University who did a lot of Siona work that I didn't have time to show you today. Uh, and I, I would like to take any questions. Thank you.